Hey guys, welcome back. Thank you for tuning in. And today we're going to be continuing the Druid Grove with some rune stones. So let's get to that video. Cue that drop. Alright guys, so while I was making the circle stones in the last video, I went ahead and made this rune stone here also. I just made some rough circles and then threw some lines, some runes, and then used the back of the Ulfa knife to kind of separate those lines. Followed it up with the tin foil, and then the next screenshot is just a picture of the texture that you get from it. Now I used the toothpick in the bottom, old same old toothpick trick, put some tacky glue on it, and then I started penetrating the circles. So I chose the little circle first, and then I'm gonna follow up with everything on the big circle. Again, using the toothpick as the support. Went ahead and tacky glued that too, just for extra support, and then connected the whole thing. Plus I added old little wizard man there for a scale, and you can see that. All right, and then this screen here is to show the side profile, and you can see it's uneven, but that's all good because druids ain't architects. So we just keep moving. Now for this one, I cut out the shape here in a solid block. Then I cut it down the middle, split them in two, took one half and then cut out the cavity in it, cut out the crevice. And then I glued it back together. Now you can fill in the seams if you don't want to see that with drywall compound, but I'm okay with that. All right, so in this next fuzz pick, I went ahead and started that big base one. So I cut out a triangle in a rough shape there and a rough base, and then I just wedged in a rock. Uh, it's not a rock yet, but I wedged in a scrap that just had that triangle shape to it. And then I started picking out other scraps that may look like rocks. So if you look like a rock, you made the cut. If not, you got tossed. And that's it. Kept on tacky gluing and building it up. Now I went ahead and did it again. Cut out a shape, threw in a scrap. Now some of these scraps I did pass my strength check and I just kind of tore them up with my hands and that's really it started tearing pasting tearing pasting that's it got some of these shapes they just naturally happened um i got inspiration while i was crafting there's really no plan to this i just saw it and i said oh let's put on that glue make it do what it do and for you that's it and then i finally made it back to the table i found a thin sheet of xps foam and I started carving up some circles and I did this freehand because I wasn't too concerned about the symmetry of it or just the preciseness of it because they're supposed to be stones. I started carving up some good old stones here and just made sure some of it had just had an edge to it. That's it, real simple, real easy. This is a real easy craft and something I do recommend if you wanna start out with something. It's just carving. I mean, it's really hard to mess up because even though if it don't look like mine, that's all good because it's going to look like yours. And that's the most important thing. All right. So while I was yapping sap, I cut out some big circles and I just hot glued everything together. Let's hit the next screen. All right. So quick little disclaimer before we get into this. I'm from the era where flagging means something. So while I was researching these runes, uh, I kind of altered them just a little bit so that they don't really mean anything. Now, if that's a concern of yours, if it's even a concern at all, that's up to you. Uh, for me, I really altered them just a bit. And you can see the bottom, the middle bottom. I mean, look at that. That's a, that's a mess up right there. That dude looks like the tentacle from Day of the Tentacle. You know what I'm saying? And then on the right hand side, that bear claw looked like a sun with drunk rays. But I etched it all in using the Sharpie. And the ink from the Sharpie actually dissolves the XPS foam just a bit. So if you go over the lines, you can actually make that crevice, that indent, the same one that you would if you took your X-Acto knife and then beveled the edges and ran a pen through it or something like that. It gives the same effect. And if you don't want a freehand drawing or you want to do your own stuff, I mean, you can always do a pencil and sketch it out and then do the marking. And it's really just a couple of passes. I mean, we're talking about maybe four passes, you know. Um, anyway, that's how I did it. 
Hey guys, actually, I just wanted to punch in real quick and let you guys know that some of the inspiration for the designs and stuff, like the suspended circle up with the moon, uh, came from pictures online. So that's a great resource to do if you ever want to get some inspiration. Just look at art, man. Some of this art is fantastic. All right, guys. So then I started with that Johnny Cash coat, that all black everything, and just started spreading it on. To water it down just to get it in the crevice, I didn't even put water in the paint. I just dipped my brush in the water and then from the water, dip it into the black paint and then put it on. And that gives it the right amount of flow, in my opinion. So for the next part, I wanted to get the runes and the inside of the runes green. Now I'm showing these two because they absolutely did not work for whatever reason. Let me know, comments below. But I went to this one. Now, the Americana, I'm starting to feel the Americana line anyway. That's a whole different discussion, but this is the one that worked. Then I went ahead and started trying to fill in those lines. Um, in hindsight, I should have probably picked a finer brush. And that was really what I was thinking after I did all this. But you know what? I like to move on, man. I just like to keep it moving, keep it flowing. I'm going to fix it. And in the end, it's that, it's that rule, that table rule, right? I mean, it's on the table at a certain distance, whatever the number that is, and it's just is what it's going to be. I'm all good, man. I'm not in competitions or anything, so I just keep on moving. That's my philosophy, man. Just keep moving forward, making progress. And then this last piece here, I didn't really fill it in green, and I went ahead and pre-sponged it up because I like to give some variation again. Uh, the green would have kind of tied it down to something, I feel like. And without putting the green in the rooms, I could go ahead and use it in like a dungeon setting or a cave setting. But I knew I was going to drop a bead in there. So this is my attempt at some lighting effect in it to make it glow. All right. And then I gave the rest of it that sponge bath right there in gray and started dabbing it on. And then followed it up with that old abused brush right there. That's uh, That's my reek brush right there. That's old reek. Now, a couple of weeks ago, there was a nice little comment on behalf of Stonehammer Files, and he recommended pre-painting each piece before you assemble it. And that's a real gem piece of advice there. And in most crafts, not most crafts, but in some crafts, it's actually mandatory that you actually do that. Now, with that does come a certain level of pre-planning. The issue that I have is that sometimes I don't know what direction I'm going to take structures. I don't know what I'm going to build. I just dive in sometimes and go for it. The other thing is I have a small workstation, so I like to build a lot of stuff and then dive into base coats and painting on a, on a night because I need that to dry. For instance, I'll have a bunch of structures and then I'll base coat everything and then let that dry. And then I come back and I take a few structures like the stone circles did that painted them let them dry and then went in for the detail came back did the video and then after the video went in and started painting up the rune stones so that's just the unfortunate event of me having a small workstation this makes it easier for me that's the type of flow um each his own everything it all works the same way and um for me again this is easier now on this screen, I'm just touching up because the gray, when I sponged it, really didn't cover up all of the overlap that the green had. So I went in with the gray, I went in with the black. I didn't even wash the brush in between colors. I just dipped and went in. When it all dries, it looked pretty good. And when it's on the table and you're looking at a distance, you don't notice that stuff. And that is what's important to me because these crafts really is about the table and bringing everyone together. And then the dry brush here, I mean, this is when projects come to life, man. I love this step because everything starts to pop. Moved on to the flocking. It's the same as the circle stones there. I like the tacky glue for the lichen because the tacky glue is nice and thick. And you can kind of like press the lichen in there and the tacky glue will kind of hug it, kind of secure that. I feel like PVA is a little too thin. But... PVA is nice and spreadable. So when you're ready for the fine grains of flocking, that's going to be your choice. And then one last thing I did here was I dipped the brush in the fern green and then dabbed the lichen. And I think that came out a little cool, man. I gave it a little pop, a little differentiated color. 
All right, and then we're down to the final steps here, so I'm going to really speed this up. But it's the same thing you're going to see for the next couple of Druid ones. It's just flocking. Spread that PVA and then toss in that flock. Spread, flock, spread, flock. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. Now, I did drop a flower in there. I got that from one of these little plants that are laying around in my house. I trimmed it. No one's going to miss it. I'm not going to do it too often because then I'm going to get yelled at, but I think I just blew up my own spot here for real. And then that final step, the 50-50 PVA glue water mix. Now, it's not exact. I didn't measure it. I just eyeballed it and said, all right, that looks good, and sprayed it down. Now, this helps seal the tops of the flocking. All right, guys, so before I get into my final shots, I want to share a final shot that was shared with me. And I hope that this is something that continues because I want to show off your guys' stuff too. This one was inspired by my very first episode, man, so that's pretty cool. And Glamour Greg, man, I'm really glad that you shared this with me, man. That really made my morning. Some of the highlight pieces I really like in this shot is that top right corner, that corner piece there, man, with the cutoff triangle type. Ooh, that, I like that one, man. I'm going to have to borrow that design there. I also like the diamond on the middle right and then that across the same row on the middle left. I like the two cutouts there. The corner pieces alone, though, man, I'm like, ooh, they look real sweet. I thought about those X's too, and I wasn't sure how it was going to come out. But now looking at uh, Greg's little design there, I'm really feeling it. So, man, this is the greatest, the greatest compliment that I could receive, really. Just taking something that I shared with you guys and then saying, yo, check out what I did with it. I think it's the coolest thing ever, man. I think I'm I, I just, I really am humble, man. I love it. So if you guys got any more, man, catch me on Twitter, catch me on Facebook, and just hit me up. Just hit me up. And this politics, let's talk a little bit and, and share it. And I would love to do more of this uh, showcasing from you guys. So, Glamour Geek Greg, man, big shout out. Thank you again for sharing that. Really did make my morning, man. Really cool, really cool. All right, guys, and that's it. So a little snippet of the stone circles that i built and then just expanding that just building onto it all right so where the circle stones are more for tactical play and for minis to kind of hide behind and you know shoot the cover the rune stones are more for interacting it's more for doing some checks and stuff and really could be anything it could be a boon it could be a curse it could be all of the above it could be boon cursing i mean the world is the oyster right so that's really much it. Let's get into that outro. All right, guys. So thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. And I hope you got a little bit of inspiration out of this. Going to be continuing the Druid's Grove with two more videos. And if you like what you saw, consider hitting subscribe. It lets you two know that I'm all right. You can come connect with me on Twitter, Craftnix, Facebook, Craftnix, Instagram, Craftnix. I'd like to hear from you guys, and big shout out to Glamour Geek Greg again, man. That was really cool, really cool. I'm not allowed to use Humble anymore, so I got to use something else. If you guys think of something, leave it in the comments below. And uh... <laughs> anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I'll see you on the next one.